Testing, testing. Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you joining us live stream, and we pray that you are in good health. Our gathering chant today is 563 in the CBW, Sing a New Song, and our presider is Archbishop Hunt. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Well, we're here the last day before Lent starts for another year, Pancake Tuesday, the last day of, of time before we begin a, a special period within the church's life, a time that for many of us is a, a time of spiritual exercise and of striving in a renewed way to be close to God. Today also is the 47th anniversary of ordination of Father Wayne Bolton, a Jesuit who serves in our diocese at St. Pius X Church. So I invite you to remember him in a special way on this, his anniversary of priestly ordination. That we may worthily come to the Lord and bring to him our praise and, and our needs, we pause to call to mind his goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. to heal the contrite of heart.
Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humanity was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made human beings on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. The Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the year also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send the rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. And after seven days, the waters of the flood came on the earth. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, the Lord will bless his people with peace.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After feeding the crowd, Jesus sent them away and got into the boat with the disciples to return to the other side of the lake. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And Jesus cautioned them, saying, Watch out! Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, It is because we have no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember, when I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, Seven. Then he said to them, Do you not yet understand? The Gospel of the Lord. Lord Seems to me that in today's Gospel passage we see happening in the life of Jesus and his disciples something that often happens, I think, in all of our lives, where somebody says something and the person hearing it uh, misunderstands what's being said. In today's Gospel, Jesus is warning the disciples about the yeast of the Pharisees, the yeast of Herod. And they think he's talking about the fact that they forgot to bring bread. But Jesus is talking about something different. He's talking about how we have to beware of those insinuations or those ways of doing things that take us away from God, that take us away from the truth, and take us away from love and acting as we should. The disciples uh, are so focused on the fact that they forgot uh, to bring bread uh, on their simple and ordinary mistake uh, that they're not uh, open to the bigger message that's being sent to them. And that can happen so easily with us too that we become focused on our own situation and, and our own frailties or weaknesses rather than on the bigger picture. And Jesus tries to bring the disciples to see that, that they don't have to worry about the small things, that he's taking care of those, that if he could feed 5,000 with five loaves and have 12 baskets full left over, if he could feed 4,000 with seven loaves and have seven baskets left over, they don't need to worry about little things like forgetting bread, but they do have to worry about the insinuations of evil, the insinuations of selfishness, that can take us away from the Lord and can take away the joy and the peace from our lives. As I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, today is Pancake Tuesday. It's the day before we start Lent for another year. And Lent is a time for us to refocus ourselves, to, to become aware of those insidious things that can take us away from God, to refocus ourselves on, on trusting God in His goodness and in doing our part to pass on that goodness and, and that love of God to the people around us. As we continue in our Mass, and as we go forth from this Mass on this last day before Lent starts, it's a good time for us to take a little time to reflect on what it is God is calling to us to in this Lent. Is it something where we're being called to focus on weaknesses and small faults, or is it a time for us to, to see more clearly where God is calling us, to trust more fully in Him, and to become more aware of those insidious things that can take us away from the Lord? God bless you. With confidence in God's goodness, let us offer to him our prayers of petition. Let us begin by praying for our Pope and for all our religious and civil leaders, 
that they may always be open to God's guidance and that they may have the wisdom and courage they need to lead well. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and for all who have been given the gift of faith that as we prepare to enter this Lenten season, we may be open to God's guidance and may make resolutions that make this Lent a, a time of grace and blessings for us and for the people that we're called to serve. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering, for all those who are struggling at this time during this time of pandemic. We pray for them, for God's grace and blessings. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our health care workers and for all those scientists and, and professionals that are seeking to deal with this pandemic, uh, that in the midst of their efforts and, and the trials and, and difficulties that they face, that they may feel God's presence and inspiration and grace. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you today, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that, through this offering, we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Blessed. 
Good is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. be bread blessed by the Lord broken and shared life for the world let us be wine love freely poured let us be one in the Lord I bread of life broken for all eat now and hunger no more let 
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 426, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Mm -hmm. 